When I first started using Obsidian over two years ago, I was pretty underwhelmed by the lack of options. I felt like I couldn't do anything that I really wanted to do, and I thought that Obsidian was pretty ugly. Fast forward two years later, and it's the exact opposite problem. Now there's too much functionality. There's community plugins for everything. There's community themes, there's customizations, and you can be tempted into thinking you need to keep up with all of these recent updates for Obsidian to be useful for you. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about why I think that the base plugins, the core plugins or options that come with Obsidian are underappreciated and how it's still possible to have a full-blown setup of Obsidian without ever installing a community plugin. And I'm gonna tell you about some disadvantages for relying on community plugins that everybody should know. There's some problems with community plugins and the first is security. Because community plugins are developed by third-party developers that don't have anything to do with the Obsidian team, it's kind of hit or miss whether you can trust them or not. Of course, because the Obsidian community is awesome, I haven't actually seen a plugin that is malicious. I'm not saying that they don't exist, but they're certainly few and far between. And the Obsidian team does vet all of the plugins that get in included in the community plugin section within Obsidian, but they're only human. So it is possible that something might slip by. And also there's just so much going on and developers are updating all the time and they don't have time to check every single update of every single plugin. So there is still a risk there. The second thing is the lack of future-proofness. While community plugins might be all the rage and really shiny and interesting to install, it can be a problem when you start to change the way that you use Obsidian and create your notes just for the plugin. I'll give you an example. Obsidian Tracker is an awesome plugin that I was pretty excited about. Here's what it would look like if I were to use it on a daily basis. Here's what a streak looks like. I've turned it off because I wanted to show you what it looks like raw. So imagine in a few years, if you have a tool other than Obsidian that you'd like to be using, or maybe the Obsidian Tracker plugin goes defunct and the developer stops developing it, you're going to be left with notes that are like this. Now it might look good while Tracker is working, but if either Obsidian or Tracker isn't working, then you're just gonna be left with a lot of notes that really won't mean anything in any other setup other than the one that you have. So there is a certain point at which these plugins start to take over your notes and they don't make much sense anywhere else. And part of the appeal of Obsidian is that it is future-proof, is that it uses standard markdown. When you introduce non-standard stuff into your notes, then that does make them less useful in the future, potentially. The third reason is clutter. The more community plugins you install in Obsidian, the more often you'll have to check for updates, the more likely it is that one of those updates will break and the higher the likelihood of some of those plugins having interactions with each other that were unintended. And it is just a little bit more complex. It's a layer of complexity that for some people isn't going to be worth the effort. For example, Data View is an Obsidian community plugin that I love a lot and will use every day for the foreseeable future. However, it does mean that I've had to refactor all of my previous notes because it requires front matter to be of any use. So you might get stuck in this cycle where you're not taking notes, it's more like you're just in a continual state of setting up your notes and you never actually get to the taking notes part. So while I love these plugins, I think that there is room to be a little bit more intentional about our choices of community plugins. By contrast, core plugins are part of Obsidian. And so the Obsidian team is responsible for creating and maintaining these plugins. So the chances are a lot lower that there are going to be any security issues or regression defects that come into play when new things are released. Of course, there are going to still be bugs, right? But they're not going to be major ones because it's a lot more controlled. Here are my top 10 core plugins that I think are underappreciated. 
Number 10 is daily notes. Now, I'm still a huge fan of daily notes, and I think that this is the best way to start with Obsidian because it can be really daunting to think, well, I'm going to build a personal knowledge management system today. But you know what's not daunting? is just journaling your day. So just log, like developers would call this a dev log, whatever you call it, just having a daily note to dump all of your random thoughts in goes a long way towards building a knowledge management system that grows over time. And that way you also don't have to start out thinking about the structure before you begin because daily notes already have a structure and it's chronological. So I think that that's a great jumping off point. Number nine is Canvas. Canvas is the newest core plugin on this list, and it's already enabled by default, which goes to show you how important the Obsidian developers think that it is. This is a plugin that is for visual thinkers. If you're wondering about the graph view, I actually considered putting the graph view in this spot, but then I thought, Canvas is just so much more useful, at least for me, because the graph view shows you pretty much everything. And there are links in there that maybe you don't really care about. And yes, you can filter them, but honestly, sometimes it's just handy to create my own little structure. And that's what Canvas lets you do. You can drag in media and that includes images and videos and you know sound files as well and embed notes. And you have this infinitely scrolling Canvas filled with connections that you make manually. And that way it's much more customizable than the graph view. You can move things around the way that you want to. Number eight is the Note Composer. I still use this quite a bit. It is a way to split, merge, and refactor your notes. You're gonna be doing a lot of that. And I think rather than trying to get it right the first time, having a plugin like Note Composer that just makes it a little bit easier to split up notes or to merge two notes that are the same, is just a lot easier to handle. And it makes you feel like you can worry about it later. It's a little quality of life thing because you can always manually just copy things into a new note, but having Note Composer is a really easy option. Number seven is workspaces. I love workspaces so much and it's only gotten better with the recent additions of like the pop-out window and being able to do tabs. You can customize pretty much everything about how the tabs are laid out in Obsidian. You can have different windows, you can have a sidebar open and then some note that's pinned to the sidebar. And with workspaces, you can save all of that. So you can have different workspaces for different use cases and then you can just load the correct one when it's time for you to do those things. And I think that it is a great way to just jump into whatever it is that you're focusing on. And it really sets Obsidian up as this general all-purpose tool for work and for play. Number six is Slides. The Slides plugin is disabled by default, just like the previous one Workspaces was, and I think that it's something that you should consider enabling. Slides turns your notes, your markdown notes in Obsidian, into presentations. Now you might think, oh, I never give presentations, or why would I use something that's so bare bones? Well, I think that that's part of the appeal. Not every presentation has to have like animations or require an entirely separate program to run. I don't know about you, but a lot of the presentations I give are like update ones where I have to create them in a few minutes and having them tied to the notes that already exist makes so much sense because I can quickly knock up a few slides just by putting those dashes in to delineate between one slide and the next. And then I can embed notes that already exist. So I don't even have to rewrite them from the beginning like I would if I were using some other app for it. I also find it a really good way to synthesize what I'm thinking. So even if I don't have to present something, I try to also create slides when I feel like I might benefit from just thinking through the story a little bit. Number five is the outline plugin. For anyone who uses Atomic Notes, maybe this isn't gonna be that useful. 
I appreciate the idea of Atomic Notes and I think that there is a place for it. However, the reality is I still do a lot of long form writing. I write blog posts or articles or, you know, sometimes I just get really caught up in something and I don't necessarily want to have like a dozen notes that are open. It's nice to have it all in one file sometimes and I don't restrict myself to always making notes Atomic. And the outline plugin goes and parses through the notes and looks for the headings and then displays those headings so that you can see at a glance what the structure is of a document. I find this incredibly useful because it's also a way to navigate through a long note because if you click those headings, you go right to that page. So I always turn it on. I have a hotkey for it and it is essential when I'm writing anything that's a little bit longer than a few paragraphs. Number four is the command palette. I love the command palette. I'm one of those people that would just use my keyboard for, for everything if I could. I do still have a mouse and in fact, I also have a trackpad, but I would really love to get away with all keyboard shortcuts all the time. And the command palette really helps with that because in Obsidian, pretty much anything that you can do, you can assign a hotkey for, but it can be a little bit difficult if you're not using it all the time, then you have to remember what the hotkeys are. But as long as it's a command, it's also going to show up in the command palette. So you can open up the command palette just by hitting control or command P, and then you can sort through everything that you need to do. And you can type out things as well. So you can search for them and then you can see the little hotkey for it. If you just need a bit of a refresher, such a small thing, but it's such an easy way to do things in Obsidian without using your mouse. Number three is quick switcher. This is another quality of life thing, but it would disrupt my flow so much if I had to open up the files pane in the sidebar just to open a file. This is why I never have files open because I just hit command or control O to open up the quick switcher. And then I can search through my entire vault. So sometimes I don't quite remember what a file name is called and I just type it there and I find it. And the quick switcher is also something that you can use to create files, not just open them. So you can type in the folder first and then the file name, and then you can shift enter to create that note and open it all in one go. Again, keyboard shortcuts, but it means that I don't have to think about where I'm going to put a note before I create it. I can just create it or switch to it. I don't have to remember what folder it was in. Number two is backlinks. Now this might be a little on the nose because I know Obsidian's main selling point is all of the interconnectedness between the notes, but I still find it essential. I think this is the one plugin that I haven't found a good replacement for. My backlinks are always open on the right sidebar and it's so handy to be able to see what other notes are linking to the current note. And another thing that I discovered only recently is that you can go into the backlink section in settings and you can enable backlink in document. What this does is in addition to having it on the sidebar. So like, for example, this is a new window right now. So the sidebar isn't going to be open, but I can have the backlinks at the very end of the note and it will automatically adjust when I link to this note. And I love that because that means that every single note now has this backlinks pane just kind of embedded into it. It really prompts me to think about how to connect this note to other notes that are already in my vault. And that's what Obsidian's really bad. Number one is a plugin that I think is essential, not just to Obsidian, but to any note-taking tool I will use. I will never use a note-taking tool that doesn't have this. And it is templates. Obsidian templates are great for automation, but they're also great for just consistency. I'm not somebody who does a great job at being entirely consistent with her notes and having a template that has all of the front matter that I want, that I've decided on, that I've deliberated on, and that I've progressed over time 
goes a long way towards reminding me what structure my notes should actually be in. The last thing I want to do is, you know, have to stop and put something on hold and think like, oh yeah, what, what front matter did I decide I wanted for this type of note? I would hate to do that. Templates just makes it easy. I create templates for every kind of file that I regularly create. So that goes for things like daily notes or, you know, yearly reviews, but it also goes for things like TTRPG systems because apparently I like to compare and contrast them. So I have a template for that. You know, I have a template for meetings, for people, for performance testing tools, for development languages, and it's just a really nice way to standardize and, and add a little structure to my otherwise pretty chaotic notes. Now, does this mean I'm uninstalling all my community plugins? Definitely not. There's so many that I love and swear by and use every day, and I'm gonna continue to use them. But you know what? They don't make me more productive because it doesn't make anyone productive to have to keep up with the latest and greatest of community plugins. It doesn't make anyone productive to be continually and infinitely setting up your notes. What does make us productive is the basics, writing stuff down, having a system for thinking about how those ideas fit in with other ideas and then coming up with ways to make something out of them. If you'd like to learn more about what you can do to actually be functional in Obsidian with minimal clutter and minimal community plugins, I actually made a course for that. It's called Obsidian for Everyone. You can check it out there. And among other things, I go through every single core plugin, how to use it, and how to maximize your use of Obsidian and optimize your workflows without having to install any community plugins. Thank you for watching. Feliz ano novo.